right, Fox News alert. U.S. Intel officials warning that Iran and Russia are trying to meddle in the election. Director of National Intelligence John Ratcliffe says Iran is behind fake emails intimidating voters as Russia obtains U.S. voter information. Even if the adversaries pursue further attempts to intimidate or attempt to undermine voter confidence, know that our election systems are resilient and you can be confident your votes are secure. Well, uh, both Russian President Vladimir Putin and Iran have denied any involvement in this. What about the, the strategy of telling everybody ahead of time instead of the aftermath like the Obama administration did? Ambassador Robert O'Brien joins us now. Ambassador, this probably wasn't a surprise to you. What about the strategy of telling us first before the election this time? No, we want the voters to know what's going on, and, and I've been talking about this for, for many months, as you know. It's, it's not just Russia and Iran, it's China, and there are several other countries that we have not gone public yet on, but uh, we're taking major steps to protect the elections. I've held uh, over 20 high-level meetings here at the White House with the National Security Council. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security is working with our 50 Secretary of States across the country. Uh, we have National Guard units stood up with their cyber uh, uh, units. I was in Iowa. And they have a terrific uh, cyber unit in the Iowa National Guard recently, and they're working with their Secretary of State. So ac across the country, we're making big efforts to, uh, to ensure that our election infrastructure is hardened yep. and uh, <clears throat> that the people, when they go out to vote, they know their votes can be counted. So we know that the country of Iran has sent these email out uh, through Estonia via Saudi Arabia uh, that essentially say, uh, vote for Trump on Election Day or we're going to come after you. What's Russia doing? What's China doing? What are the examples you can give us regarding those countries? Well, the, the thing to, uh, to, to, you know, it's no surprise that Iran has done this because the JCPOA has cut them off from billions of dollars of the jackpot that they received when they uh, signed the JCPOA. All those billions have been cut off, so there's no surprise that they're getting involved in our election. They don't like the fact that the Abraham Accords were signed and that Israel's mm -hmm. making peace with all their Arab neighbors. Uh, so it's no surprise there with Iran. The same thing with Russia. Uh, you know, we've been the toughest administration. The president's been tougher on Russia than uh, any administration since Ronald Reagan. Uh, we see that they're out on Twitter and in various places with this information. Uh, you can see the same thing with China. China goes about uh, uh, trying to cultivate local leaders, mayors and governors and congressmen, and, and convince them that if they don't vote China's way or they don't do what China wants, China won't invest in their districts or in their cities and that sort of thing. So, uh, and there are the other countries that are attempting to, to do things uh, via cyber and and Twitter and Facebook. So what we ask the American people to do is just make sure that the, the information you're getting is from a trusted source. So uh, back to, I think, to Brian's initial comment, uh, the president wanted to get out early on this and let the American people know what's happening. Right. This is not something we're sweeping under the rug. We're trying to shine a light on it because sunshine and transparency is the biggest disinfectant to anyone who tries to interfere with our elections. What are y'all doing to make sure that this election is fair, is legitimate? Well, that, yeah, it's a great question, Ainsley. I mean, we're working, we've got a, a massive unit of Homeland Security. We've spent hundreds of millions of dollars helping the states. And as you know, the, the states run our elections. We've spent hundreds of millions of federal dollars helping secretaries of state and lieutenant governors who manage their elections out in the states harden their infrastructure. The good news is we're so decentralized and 95% of the ballots that are cast have some sort of paper analog so that they can be audited. It's very difficult for a, an adversary to actually change the outcome of the elections. And we've been, we've been doing everything we can to make sure that's the case on Election Day, that no one can, uh, can, can play with the tallies with the votes as they come in. And we're, we're very confident, as Director Radcliffe said, that we're in good shape on that front because of the money that we've spent, because of the advanced planning, because of the White House's involvement in, in making right. sure our elections are safe. So we're, we're, right. we're feeling pretty good about those things. Stunningly, the moderator in today's debate has, has three of the same topics, maybe four, that Chris Wallace picked. Foreign policy is not one of them. That must frustrate you because you're going, uh, the, the president's going against a vice president that was told by his secretary of defense that he's been wrong on every major foreign policy and national security decision over the last 40 years, that killed Gaddafi and had no plan for the next day, that pulled out of Iraq and gave us ISIS and called him the JV team, was part of a presidency that did not back up a red line after chemical weapons. You would love to contrast your approach to their approach, wouldn't you? Uh, I should send you up for the debate, Brian. That was fantastic. But no, I want to focus on what the president's done. The president's brought peace to the Middle East uh, with the historic Abraham Accords with, the, with peace between Israel and Bahrain and UAE. And there's more to come. I think we're going to have some announcements uh, soon on that front. Uh, the president, through Secretary Pompeo, uh, signed an agreement with the Taliban 
uh, to stop the Taliban attacks on U.S. military in Afghanistan. And we're mo moving towards peace in Afghanistan with talks that we're supporting there. We brought justice to Baghdadi. And, and just recently, we brought the Beatles home, these jihadis from England that, were, that killed uh, Kayla Mueller. We're bring, and they're going to be prosecuted and, and, and put in jail for life. They killed right. Foley and Sotloff and Kasich. Uh, we're going to bring them to justice. The president stood up to China, the first president in, in my lifetime that stood up to China. He put massive tariffs on them and, and is, is bringing free and fair trade you know, back to our relationship with China. He stood up to, on the China virus against them. He's rebuilt our military. He's encouraged NATO to spend an additional $400 billion uh, in, in spending to defend the West from China and from Russia. So when, when you look at what the president has done, and that, that doesn't even get to the trade deals, the, the MC, USMCA, uh, which replaced the terrible NAFTA, I was in Brazil this past week. We signed three new trade deals that are fantastic for America with Brazil. Uh, so it's just one thing after another that the president done. He's done, he's done more in the, the year and a half that I've been here uh, since uh, than, than most presidents do in eight years. It's really been impressive. Ukraine, too. And the embassy. Yes. Uh, Ambassador, after uh, the director of national intelligence uh, and the FBI director made their statement uh, to the press yesterday about 7.30, uh, Adam Schiff had this observation. We'd like your comment. Watch. As far as Director Ratcliffe's statement, the two examples that he gave of Iranian interference, uh, the mailing of these uh, emails purportedly from the Proud Boys uh, to Democratic voters, uh, appear to be an effort to suppress the Democratic vote um, or an effort to inflame the Democratic vote or simply to sow chaos. It's hard to see how that could be hurtful to the president. So we don't know whether this is just Ratcliffe's spin or whether it's the assessment of the analysts. Sadly, for the American people is they can rely on what they hear from the FBI director. They cannot rely on what they hear from the director of national intelligence without uh, proof on the table. What do you think about that? You can't trust what the uh, director of national intelligence says unless he says, ladies and gentlemen, exhibit A. It's really sad, <clears throat> and it's sad that it's coming from Chairman Schiff because he has access to the intelligence. He's seen it. He knows that we can't release the intelligence either on Russia or on Iran or China or these other countries that are interfering with our, our elections. He's seen it, but then he, then he challenges the director of national intelligence to release sensitive signal intelligence or human intelligence or, or, or satellite uh, reconnaissance that we have, knowing that that won't happen. So that's a sad thing. I know John Radcliffe. John Radcliffe's a good man. Uh, and, and you saw standing behind him was Chris Ray and the rest of the team. Uh, there, there, are, there are real uh, efforts at, on behalf of our adversaries, and I've said this from the start, whether it's Russia or China or Iran or others, to sow discord among Americans. And uh, we've got to, uh, we've got to stop it, and we're going mm -hmm. to stop it. And, and that sort of, you know, Schiff's com Chairman Schiff's comments were the, is just the sort of discord that they were hoping to stir, so that's unfortunate. He gets lower every day. Ambassador, thank you so much. Good to see you. Great to be with you. Thank you. You're welcome.